Welcome to the ninth video on Microsoft Surface and Windows 8. In this video I'm going to um, answer a, a viewer's request and that viewer happens to be my mom. Um, she actually bought a Surface before I did and so she's been watching the videos to try to learn a little bit about it. Um, and one of her requests was she wanted to be able to set up the Surface so that she could let her grandkids um, use the device without having to worry about them getting to sites they shouldn't or trying to download games that would cost money. Um, one of the things I think she was also worried about is um, getting fees. You've probably heard the horror stories about someone using a phone and finding out that they've racked up thousands of dollars in fees for data connection. Um, because the Surface doesn't have a wireless um, phone carrier card in it, um, you don't have to worry about that problem. It's going to be using the Wi-Fi connection, but they could rack up charges on games or go to content they don't want to. Um, and so the first suggestion I would have for, for setting up a system for, for kids is go into settings by swiping to the right, um, hitting settings here, then go change PC settings. And what we're going to do is we're going to add an account specifically for the kids. Um, in the last video, we were on the user screen and I showed you how you could change settings for your own account. But if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see there's an option to also add new accounts. Um, add a user is the one. And you can see below that I've already added one called Kids Account. And I just did that ahead of time because it takes a couple minutes for it to configure everything. So we'll be able to look at that one at the end. Um, but just to see the steps, hit Add a User. And then it's going to ask you for an email address. Um, now, for the kids' account, you don't actually want to create one. Um, you want to sign in with what they call as a local account. And so to do that, there's an option down here, sign in without a Microsoft account. Click on that, and then basically you're going to click on the button that says local account here. In the local account, it's going to ask you for a name, and we can just make up something called kids2 a password, so probably something easy for them to remember. Um, and because you're going to protect the device, it doesn't really matter if it's, if it's something um, really tough to guess either. Um, and then a hint for yourself, just in case you for, forget what you used for the, um, for the password. So once you have that all um, put together, then you hit the next button. Um, and you'll see below the kids account too, there's an option um, to check says, is this a child's account? Turn on family safety. And so I'm gonna click on that and we'll, I'll show you a little bit more of what that's about next. And so you're just gonna hit finish here. Now, family safety um, is basically a feature that Microsoft has had on the operating system for at least a release or two. And it provides a few options for controlling what people that sign into that account can do with the device and also offer some monitoring. Um, to get to it, you're going to go back to the start screen and you're just going to start to type family. And then you're going to select under the search screen here, settings. And you'll see on the left-hand side, it's found two things, family safety and set up a family safety for any user. So we're going to click that second one. And you're going to see it goes to desktop and then brings up a window that, that shows the account available on the system. And it's showing the one I just set up, the kids too, but we're going to pick the kids account because that one's already um, configured. And so we're going to click on that one. And this is going to show you the same screen you'll see with a new account. So the first thing you have on the top there is, a, is an option to turn off enforced settings. And so you might want to do this if temporarily you're using the account yourself and you want to be able to run any app, or if one of the grandkids, you sort of trust them to use it and you don't trust one of the other ones. So in general, though, you're going to want to keep that on. Then you also have the activity reporting option. And this is probably more if you're going to be allowing them to use the device when you're not around. And what it does is it collects information and displays it on a web page that you, only you have access to on what they've been up to so you can see when they sign in what they were using and so for the most part those are probably not one that my mom's going to use but might be useful for you and your family the options you might be interesting though are the ones at the bottom there um, web filtering time limit Windows store restrictions and app restrictions so let's click the web filtering one first so you have the option to allow them to go to any website, but I can sort of see um, why you would, might want to restrict it. And so you'd pick the second options here, option here, saying kids' account can only use the websites I allow. And then you can either set a filtering level, um, which basically a website will rate, um, say, what, what age group it's associated with, and it will only show ones that meet your criteria. Or you can hit allow or block specific websites. 
which is probably the safer of the two. And what I would do is allow um, websites is go through and pick some that you know the kids want to play with, especially if it's young kids, and type those in. Probably even um, go back to one of the previous videos where I showed you how to customize um, Use IE to pin um, websites to the start menu or to the start page. I would do that and then make sure that those are on the allowed website list so they can get to them. Um, so that's one thing you can do. Now we can also go back to user settings and then I'll show you the time limit options. Um, so this is probably more applicable if you're allowing them to use the device on their own. And there's two options you can do. You can basically set a time allowance um, which says on a weekday or on a weekend how many hours are they allowed to sign in or how many minutes so you can say they're only allowed to use the computer for one hour and then it will it will force them off after that um, or you can go and pick the curfew option and with the curfew option um, you have to change it to kids account can only use the PC during the time ranges I allow click on that and you can see you can actually select which day and which particular time periods they're allowed to use it and so this is another way that you can control, control that they're not using it during school using it in the evening, whatever it is that you want to try to control. Um, so that's, that's the time, time setting. Now this other one, Windows Store and Game Restrictions, um, if you click on that one you'll see that by default allows them to use any one, but you can go here and you can sort of say can only use games and Windows Store apps I allow, um, and then here's where I think the rating is a little bit useful here. So hit the set game rating and you'll see it lists all of the different options. And so you can do early childhood, um, three ages, age three and older, um, everyone, six and older. And so pick whatever one you think is the most appropriate for the, the folks that will be using this account. You can also go to allow or block games. Um, I don't have any games installed right now on this one, but you can control the specific ones that they're allowed to use um, if you know which ones um, you want to set up and, and allow them to use. Um, so it's pretty hard to block apps um, unless there's one in particular you don't want them to want them to use. And then there's the same thing for app restrictions for the apps on the system. You can actually go and specify particular applications you want them to use or don't want them to use on it. So maybe you want to turn off the camera or turn off music. I'm not sure which one, but you'll see there's a list of them here, and you can decide which one um, which ones are appropriate um, for the kids to use or not use. So I pretty much have this set up that way where I wanted to. Um, one thing you probably noticed is there was no option on there to say pick um, only allow games that are free. Um, and this is where the local account helps us. So if I go to top free and I bring up those games there, it should be filtered to show only the ones that um, have the everyone rating that, that I picked. Um, I can click on one and you can see I can even go and install it. Um, and so a free game though isn't costing you anything. What happens if I try to go to a paid app? So let's go back to the first screen here. I'm going to go to the top paid and oh it actually shows it to me and it shows the cost. So you might be concerned that this might be showing you that the user even with the controls can download the games. But let's try it. We're going to go to simple physics here we're going to hit buy on the buck 49 and then we're going to hit confirm. This is now actually bringing up a window to ask me for my account because I'm the owner, I have admin rights, I'm the only one that would be able to put um, apps on this device because of the child controls and so basically the kid is not going to be able to install it unless they know my password and what this allows is now I can actually add applications that I do approve of, ones that I do want to pay for and let them use to their account so they can still use it um, without having to set an account up for them. So sort of a smart way of doing it. There's still prevented from installing new ones, but I can give them access to the accounts that I want, want them to use. Um, and that is one important thing to realize with, with um, the, the Surface device in, in Windows 8, is that the modern apps are per user. So if you remove it for yourself, it's not removing it for others. Um, but at the same time, if you add it for yourself, I, most apps, if not all of them, it's only going to be available for your account. Um, it has separate copies for each user. 
And so that's the basics for setting it up. I'm going a little long here, but I do want to sort of um, show one last thing, and that's going to open up IE. And I've sort of browsed to familysafety.microsoft.com and signed into my account. And you can see here's where it's listing the accounts that I'm monitoring. And so kids' account is the, is the one that, um, that we were just looking at. And you can hit view activity, and it will basically show um, what that account has been up to, what time it was used, how long, um, what they went to, um, all that kind of stuff. So useful page to go and, and see what, what your child has been up to if they're using it without your supervision. And then the last thing to show um, is I'm going to sign out of my account. And actually, I'm not even going to sign out. I'm just going to switch to another account. Um, you can have two accounts say, signed in at the same time. And so I'm going to switch to the kid's account. It's going to take their password. And when it logs you in, the first time you log into a new account, it's going to take a few minutes as it sets everything up. Um, it warns you that this account is monitored by sa um, family safety. And then it provides an interface that is not. It, it's not the same tile that's on my desktop. It's not linked to my Facebook. It's not linked to anything else. And you can now customize this desktop for the kids. Put the games maybe on the very first page. If you do want to put some photos just for them to go through, some music, some videos, whatever you want, this is their profile and it's going to be set up specifically for them. Any changes they make are not going to affect your account. And also, just by hiding some stuff that you don't want them to access, that's another way of, of sort of preventing them from getting to things that you don't want them to. Um, and so that's about it. I think that covers everything that you, you might be concerned about for, for access on this with, with kids. There's no concern about them being charged anything, um, charged anything if, if you use a local account and you block web pages that you're worried about them going to. Um, so hopefully that answers um, any questions you have on, on setting up family safety and um, stay tuned for um, more videos on other topics um, in the next couple of days. Stay tuned.